What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, and I am back with another idiotic video for you to watch. Partly idiotic because I have my daughter over here. She is coloring, but uh, hopefully she doesn't make too much noise. But I finally got to film a wedding with the Fujifilm X-T4 after four months of ownership. Obviously due to the pandemic, I haven't had any weddings to film until this past weekend, which I actually filmed two, and... Um, Here's one of them. And of course, that was just a quick sneak peek, which I offer for all my clients pretty much within 24 to 48 hours after their wedding. I cannot show the second film due to an NDA, but um, I just want to quickly share my experiences using the Fujifilm X-T4 over the weekend. Things I liked, things I didn't like, and I hope that it will help somebody with their decision if they're trying to go with the Fujifilm X-T4 for their wedding filmmaking needs. So... So this right here is the setup that I went with. It's the Fujifilm X-T4 with the Sigma 18-35 f1.8 lens with the Fringer adapter for, because since this is an EF mount, um, and this is a small rig cage with a top handle, I think it's called a NATO handle with a quick release. Um, this is actually the same cage here but this is made for the Sony a7S III, which I do not have yet. I will have later on this month, hopefully, if it delivers on time. And that will be my main go-to camera, as I have been a Sony shooter for the past five or six years. So, I've obviously I switched over, or I didn't switch over, but I purchased an X-T4 so I could shoot 4K60, and that's exactly what I did over the weekend. I shot a lot of 4K60 with this camera, and obviously Sony has been lacking that these past five or six years and now they have the Sony a7S III coming out and obviously back there I have all of my Sony glass so it just makes more sense for me to shoot with the Sony system going forward versus shooting with the Fuji. So what I do like about the Fujifilm X-T4 is obviously it has 4K 60, 10 bit, a manageable file size and the image looks amazing. I mean I'm not a big proponent of color science per system but the colors look great. Uh, F-Log is very easily gradable, and I really have no complaints about the overall look. It is sharp, it has good dynamic range, very usable. Um, I don't think I would need any more than the dynamic range that the Fujifilm X-T4 offers. And obviously the Sony a7S III offers even more than that, which is fantastic. But like I said, it's not really the most necessary thing. What I didn't like is the autofocus is still a little bit sketchy. So up until now, I've been only been filming like my daughter, one, you know, one object, one subject type of thing. And this weekend for a wedding, I actually finally filmed with two people, which is the bride and groom. And when I autofocus is on, and of course face, uh, face detect, all that stuff is on, it seems to like to go back and forth, back and forth between the bride and groom's face. Like I could see the, the, uh, the little like icons going back and forth. And when it does that, I could see the camera begin to hunt. And when it hunts, obviously it starts like doing like a little bit of pump autofocus. And from my testing, this lens uh, and adapter combination is great at autofocus compared to even like a lot of Fuji's native lenses. And yeah, so uh, it is, I definitely don't think it's a fault of this lens because I also tried the Viltrox 33 and it's kind of the same thing. So what happens is as I'm filming, I have to really actively keep hitting 
the screen to make sure I spot focus where I need to. And usually I just like spot focus on like the bride's dress and it usually gets, you know, what I want in focus. So that was issue number one versus like when I shoot with a Sony, it's, I can just let it do its thing. Like literally Sony autofocus just knows exactly what I want it to do at all times. And I don't really have to mess with it. Like I just point the camera where I want, I just point the lens where I want it to shoot and it just focuses on what I want it to focus on. And in this case, bride and groom. The other issue is the first day, the Fujifilm X-T4 performed flawlessly. So I didn't have any issues with it. Didn't see anything wrong. It just worked perfectly. You know, I still had to mess with autofocus and all that stuff, but other than that, the camera worked fine. Day two, I think it's because it was hotter, it started having other issues where I had an issue of one of the files writing. So I was recording a segment with um, the bride and her mom and for some reason it didn't want to write. So it started doing something, it started loading that I was writing and then I lost that particular file. If that was something more important, like I don't know, the first kiss at the ceremony, that'll be a huge issue. But it just happened during prep, so not a big deal. Secondly, I got the auto, uh, the uh, overheating symbol about four or five times throughout the day. Um, and most of the time, luckily, it wasn't that important. So when it turned on, it was kind of like time for me to turn off the camera anyway. So I'm like, okay, you know what? It's not a big deal. And when it went, by the time I turned it back on, that the overheating symbol was, was gone. Uh, but it's still kind of disconcerting uh, considering like I wasn't shooting it that much. I was doing 4K60 like on and off. And uh, it had overheating symbol came on. Came on. But luckily, um, I was... Also testing out the new Sigma um, 85 millimeter F 1.4 DG DN DN stands for D's nuts lens for the uh, Sony system. So when the overheating system, uh, the overheating symbol came on, I just put the Fuji XT4 down. And I just started shooting with the Sony A7 III, and you know it's fine. Uh, that sneak peek I showed you earlier, I literally mix and match A7 III and Fujifilm XT4 footage. I uh, don't know if you noticed it or not, but I'll show it again with all of like the details of what camera you use, what lens you use, and all that stuff. So with that said, um, I think I made my decision for sure that I will be definitely just sticking with Sony. Uh, Sony a7S III will be my main driver. I'm still trying to consider if I should have uh, pre-order an additional Sony a7S III or not and have two. But right now I just need at least one a7S III and I'm going to be definitely selling my Fujifilm X-T4 because I just think the Sony a7S III is better for me in terms of obviously it has the better video uh, focused specs, it has better autofocus and I have all the glass that I need for the system and all of the glass works really well for autofocus from 16 mil all the way up to 200 mil. Like every lens you could buy for the Sony system has great autofocus versus Fuji, I'm kind of just kind of stuck with this adapted glass or a couple of you know F2 type glasses where Sony, I could just pick and choose whatever lens I feel like and it'll work flawlessly for me. And um, obviously, there are some the issues with autofocus with the Fuji uh, Film X-T4 where it is definitely usable. Is it 100% reliable? No. Does it sketch them out a little bit? Yes. Is it as bad as Panasonic? No. Nothing is as bad 
as Panasonic autofocus. Do I still recommend it though? If your budget is not, you know, fit Sony system because Sony can get expensive, especially the Sony a7S III is like $3,500. And like I mentioned in a previous video, this setup, including like three additional lenses, uh, 23, 33, and 50 millimeter lenses, is still cheaper than the Sony a7S III body. So if you're in a market for a video centric camera for your filmmaking needs, whether it be weddings, corporate, what have you, and the budget is not $3,500 a7S III, I still highly recommend the Fujifilm X-T4. Um, like I said, you just gotta keep an eye out on slight overheating, uh, the slight chance of overheating at 4K60, and obviously um, autofocus. So that is it guys. This video wasn't as idiotic as I thought it would be, but I was just I just wanted to share my overall thoughts and opinions after using this Fujifilm X-T4 over the weekend for actually three shoots. I did Friday, I did a save the date, quote unquote, engagement video for a couple. And then Saturday was a wedding film. And then Sunday was a wedding film. And the video that I've been showing you, the sneak peek I've been showing you is the uh, sneak peek from the Saturday wedding. Um, and once I'm done with the save the date video, I'll also, I'll post it here as well for you to see. So if you appreciate the content, if you appreciate my opinions, um, and once again, it is only my opinion, so you know don't take my opinion as like, like the holy grail of opinions on the F XT4 versus A7S III. And I'm still going to do more comparisons between the two cameras once I get the A7S III. But it's just my opinion of my use over the weekend in terms of like the whole time I was just wishing like I wish I had like the specs of this body, but I wish I had like the Sony body with autofocus and the lenses. Makes sense. So it's like the whole time, the whole weekend, I was all I was thinking, and also mostly I was shooting it handheld. I was want to mention that I was shooting it handheld with just this, this rig like this a lot. Day two, I did get an opportunity to use the Juin Crane Two S. Uh, Juin is sending me one, but it has not come yet because I'm a YouTube douchebag and my channel is not the greatest. I guess it's trash. So they're taking their time saying it to me, which is understandable. But I did. Say Park, my second shooter, co-cinematographer. He's his Juin ambassador, so he had one for me to try out. So I actually used that on day two, and I'll have a review of the Juin Crane 2S coming soon as well. Uh, all I can say is a great gimbal, and it could handle this setup, no problem. So if you want to see more, please like and subscribe. And until next time, lighten up.